It's the last South East Junior Hurling final of the millennium here in Ballygarvan between Ballon Hassig and Corsi Rovers. Just three minutes gone in the game. Sorry about the late start. And the score at the moment is Ballon Hassig two points, Corsi Rovers one point. Ballon Hassig's points came from Shawnee McCarthy and John O'Sullivan, both from Freeze. And Corsi Rovers' point came from Dennis Toomey. Play now in the Corsi half back line. Ball going over the line there from the stick of Damien McCarthy. And the linesman, Ollie Webb, signals a sideline ball to Corsi Rovers. Their number seven, Anto Hagerty, to take this one. Danto placing it carefully. Alan Hasick subs looking on there in the foreground as he comes up to take this one. It's a good one from Anto, but it's blocked down very quickly by Shawnee McCarthy. Shawnee doesn't get it, however. Corsi's come away with it. A shoulder there, and it's a sideline ball to Ballon Hassig this time. And Shawnee signalling to the referee that he's going to be the one to take it. Just 45 metres out from the Corsi goal. Lively exchanges in the opening of this game. It's a low one from Shawnee. Donald Lumber going for it, doesn't get it down. Deneen tussling there as well, but the ball is collected. And Brian Downing trying to clear it, but he's hooked. And it's gone out again for another sideline ball for Ballon Hassig. And Shawnee again will be the taker. Massive crowd here in Ballygarvan for this eagerly awaited tussle. He gets the ball in. Anto Hagerty coming out, trying to kick it away before him. Half tackled there by James Ahern. Ahern racing into the corner. Lifts the ball. Faced by John O'Donoghue, half blocked down, sends a low ball in. A race for possession inside. The ball is collected by Timmy Lorden, the wing back, and Brian Hayes leaves it there for a free out for Corsi Rovers, just inside their own 20 metre line. And the goalkeeper, the long pucking Seamus Hurley, to take this one, lifts it and drives it away down the field, dropping down into the Ballon Hassig half back line there, centre back Kevin Cullinan comes across for it, Cullinan has it a good clearance from him, out the field John O'Sullivan chasing onto it, Corsi's players back in number, Timmy Lorden, one of the newcomers to the Corsi's team this year over on the far side, fails to block O'Sullivan down, out comes full back Gary Maloney, and Dear McDuggan, another newcomer to the side, a minor from Ballon Hassig, and the whistle goes, and referee Pat O'Neill from the Shamrocks Club comes across for, for this one. And Pat, I think, is indicating, yes, it's a throw-in between Donald Lumber and Brian Downing. Donald holding Brian off at the moment, and the ball comes out to Shawnee McCarthy. Corsi defenders there in number. Brian Hayes has it. Brian from Castle Park up the far side, very close to the line. Flicks the ball on. Dennis Toomey doesn't get it. Ball cleared out. Brendan Lumbert has it for Cork, the number seven up into the far corner, a race above between Gary Maloney and Dermot Duggan. Maloney getting the better of it and coming out with the ball, and again clearing out towards the sideline. James Ahern doesn't get to it. Brendan Lumbert has it, trying to get it away. Doesn't succeed this time, beaten to it by David Hayes, and the ball going out over the sideline on the far side, off a of Ballon Hassig stick, and Dennis Toomey, Will be the taker, although his brother Liam is going across to do the honours. Liam testing the spring and the stick. Plenty of excitement here in the early stages of this game. A good sideline, well over into the corner. A race on the far side, Con Carlin going for with Brian Hayes, but the ball beats both of them over the line. And it's going to be a sideline ball to Ballon Hassig. The umpire on the far side there is Gerald Harrington, the referee from Carrigaline, showing where this is to be taken from. Blocked down by Brian Hayes. Brian a judge to have been standing too close to the ball. And again, the sideline to be taken. It's actually Ballon Hassig's number two, Martin Cusson. Picked on the right corner, but playing over on the left, sends this one down the field, a free down. And Donald Lumber trying to get possession, doesn't get it. Brian Hayes, Brian involved in much of the action in the early stages. Coming out with this one, soiling away down the field. Nearly down to halfway, trying to get it on to David. Blocked by Damien McCarthy. Darren Deneen has it. A bit of loose pulling in there, and it's a free in for Ballon Hassig. And Pat O'Neill, the referee, getting out his book and noting the number, I think, is probably that of Brian Hayes. 
as Shawnee McCarthy stands over this one. Shawnee already having pointed one. Straight in front of the goal, sends it in. Makes no mistake, the white flag goes up. It's another point for Ballon Hasig, their third point of the game to Corsi's solitary point at the moment. Seamus Hawley sending the one send, sending this one down beyond halfway. Locked down there by Con Call and Johnny Milani racing across for it. Under pressure from Jamie Hayes, very close to the line. Charlie White goes back. Charlie returned from Australia. Goes back, but the ball has gone over the line off a coursey stick, and it's a sideline ball for Ballon Hasse and Shawnee McCarthy. Grounds here in Ballygarvan in immaculate condition as usual, and a very good day here for Hurling. This eagerly awaited tussle between last year's champions, Ballon Hasig, and champions of 97. Corsi Rovers, very unlucky not to win the county that year, but very eager this year to try and win back their title. Damien McCarthy wearing the number 13. A great cut from Damien, dropping inside. Sticks go up for it, the ball drops there. John O'Sullivan pulls in it, but there's a tail in it. It's gone wide on the left-hand side. Umpire signalling there as Seamus Hurley comes across to take the puck out. Both goalkeepers here, both Seamus Hurley and Michal O'Keefe in goal for Ballon Hassig. Both very long puckers of the ball. The scoreboard reads three points to one in favour of Valen Hassig. As Seamus comes out with this one, about six minutes gone in the game, sends this one down to David Hayes in the middle of the field. David getting away with the ball, being chased there by Damien McCarthy, sends the ball inside. Dangerous, a tussle for possession inside. Declan Healy doesn't get it, the ball sent across to the far side. Kevin Cullinan trying to get possession under pressure from Con O'Regan. And a tussle over on the far side. John Murphy involved there. Ball very near the end line. He appeared to be hooshed over the, out over the end line. And that's the decision. It's a puck out for Michal O'Keefe as the umpire signals it wide. Michal O'Keefe taking his time with this one. Sends it out the field. Dropping well beyond halfway. Stick of Brian Downing bats it down out in, into the middle of the field. Jamie Hayes first on the pull. Inside to Dennis Toomey. Dennis wearing number 11 but playing in the wing. Over to the far side to Brian Hayes. Brian gets around his marker, sends a high dangerous ball inside. They're pulling for it. Declan Healy's hand goes up. Under pressure there from number 15, John Murphy. Healy gets in the clearance. Out as far as the half-back line, Kevin Cullinan, the centre-back, trying to add to it, kicks it on, but David Hayes has it for the course, he sends it inside to Jamie Hayes, and the whistle blows there, an indiscretion, and a free for Corsi Rovers, inside the 45-metre line, over on the far side. And the free-taker, Corsi's free-taker, standing over the ball, will be there, number 10, that's Jamie Hayes. Jamie, a free taker of note, sends this one in, makes no mistake, sends it over the bar for the Corsi's second point of the game. We're looking at about seven and a half minutes gone in this first half. Part of the massive crowd here and commentary here from John Cashman of County Sound. Ball dropped over on the far side. Tussle for possession, John O'Sullivan flicking the ball inside to Donald Lumbert wearing number nine but operating on the 40 at the moment. Under close attention there from Brian Downing. And Timmy Lorden also involved and the ball goes out over on the far side for a sideline ball to Ballon Hassig and the evergreen no, number 10 for Ballon Hassig, Dennis McCarthy, brother of Shawnee to take this one. Inside the 20 meter line on the far side, a great cut from Dennis across the goal mouth. Sticks go up for it, Shawnee flicks it, a nice flick, but wide, wide on the right-hand side. Plenty of excitement here in Ballygarvan for these early exchanges. And Seamus Hurley again to puck out on the far side. Dennis Toomey goes up for it, beaten this time by Brendan Lumbert, a good clearance from Lumbert. But Brian Downing, the centre-back for Corsi, sends the ball back down into the half-forward line. John Murphy has it, takes a look and sends it in. 
A good effort from John Murphy, but a slight tail in it. Wide on the left hand side. Another puck out here for Michal O'Keefe in the Ballonhasse goal. Michal holding his place despite the availability of Dermot Coleman and the promising minor Martin Coleman. Again the stick of Brian Downing. Downing very involved in the early exchanges at centre back gets this one out as far as another man who's involved a lot Dennis Toomey over to the far side Brian Hayes takes a look over and sends this one across a beautiful score from Hayes a great point from Brian Hayes for Corsi Rovers third point Tana Forna Erko score we're coming up to just over nine minutes gone in the first half plenty to cheer about here in Ballygarvan Michal O'Keefe's puck out, Shawnee McCarthy has it in the hand. Chased there by Anto Hakerty, Shawnee gets it across to the far side. Lovely flick inside from Dennis McCarthy, nudging Brian Hayes off the ball. James Ahern flicking it back out to John O'Sullivan and John sends it in, but a very low one into Seamus Holly, the goalkeeper. Seamus is fouled as he attempts to clear that one. And it's a free to the Corsis. Just this free should be just outside the edge of the small square and Seamus will be the man to take it himself. Seamus lifting this one and sending it down the field. Johnny Milani is under it. Johnny puts up the hand that breaks away from him. Inside to John Murphy and John Murphy's racing through. And Declan Healy, the Ballonhasic fullback. A judge to have fouled John Murphy and for his trouble he's also getting his name in the referee's book and it's going to be a free in for Corsi Rovers and a chance for Jamie Hayes. Jamie a free taker of renown in the 97 campaign again making no mistake with this one sending it over the bar. Just over 11 minutes gone in the first half. Corsi's at the moment having the better of the exchanges by one point, four points to three. Mihalo Keyflesh and Pokemakarish. Goes past the centre back and centre forward. John O'Sullivan has it a good hook there by Timmy Lorden. Inside and a beautiful goal there from Dennis McCarthy. A first time flick from Dennis McCarthy. A beautiful goal for Ballon Hassig. Seemed to be no danger as the ball went inside. He seemed to be well covered by Brian Hayes. But that's Dennis McCarthy for you. Always does the unexpected. A beautiful flick to put Ballon Hassig back in the lead. 1 3 to 4 points. Puck out. Dropping down between Brendan Lombard and Dennis Toomey. It's the hand of Toomey gets it this time. Sends a low one inside. John Murphy collects it. Sends it low. Michal O'Keefe back. It's in the net. It's in the net. A quick response from Corsi Rovers. John Murphy sent the ball in. Michal O'Keefe got, got to stick to it. But as the ball broke back out, Brian Hayes was in to finish it off to the net for Corsi Rovers. Restoring Corsi's lead. 1-4 for the Corsi's, Ballon a goal and three points. Quick response there from Corsi's as Michal O'Keefe pucks this one out. No time to draw a breath here. Donald Lumber doesn't catch it, breaks inside to John O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan takes a look and sends it in and restores parity in the game. A point for Ballon from John O'Sullivan. 1-4 apiece. And Jim Doody there, the scorekeeper for Ballygarvan GA Club for years now, changing the scores. Ball drops in James Ahern trying to get a stick to it. Johnny Milani doesn't get it away. Charlie White, the returned Oz man. Charlie has it out in the middle of the field. Trying to sell a dummy there and sending the ball inside. A dangerous one. O'Keefe gets the hand to it and gets it out. Very close to the far sideline. John O'Sullivan trying to keep it in play. Doesn't succeed and the ball breaks off him. And it's going to be a sideline ball on the far side to Corsi's on the 45 metre line. And David Hayes wearing the number eight going across to take this one. Martin Coleman there, former cock goalkeeper in the background. Out shouting words of encouragement for Ballon Hassig as David places this one.
Great sideline ball dropping inside. The hand that goes up is the hand of the fullback Declan Healy. A good clearance from Healy. Out to the middle of the field. John O'Sullivan doesn't get it. He's beaten by Timmy Lorden. And the ball is sent back in. And the white flag goes up. A great point there for Corsi Rovers. From well beyond the halfway line. Coming up now to halfway through this first half. Michal O'Keefe, busier of the two keepers at the moment. Drops the ball outside, sticks go up for it. James Ahern pulling for it with Liam too. Pulling again, Anto Hagerty gets a flick to it, but the whistle is gone. Another free for Corsi's, Ahern a judge to have fouled. Anto Hagerty, wasting no time, sends the ball back down the field. Brian Hayes doesn't get it, it comes back to Martin Cusson wearing the number two. A low clearance from Cusson. Very close to the line. Timmy Lorden has it for Corsi's. Back inside to Brian Hayes. Brian takes one look and sends it in. John Murphy doesn't get it. Declan Healy clearing it away for Ballon Hassig out the field. Comes out to Johnny Milani, the captain of the side. Milani adding to it further up the field. Donald Lumber flicking it outside. Dennis McCarthy, lovely flick there to John O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan trying to shake off the attentions of Timmy Lorden. Not easily done, gets the ball across and it's straight across the face of Seamus Hurley's goal. And wide on the right hand side despite the efforts of Darren Deneen for Ballon Hassig. Deneen has been fairly quiet in this game so far. 1-5 for Corsi's and 1-4 for Ballon Hassig, just a pint between the sides. And Seamus Hurley again with the puck out. Seamus taking good with and dropping it down. Brendan Lombard is again under this one, beaten by Jamie Hayes, but the ball is cleared up by Kevin Cullinan on to Shawnee McCarthy. Dennis McCarthy coming across with Brian Hayes, but Dermot Duggan gets it, but sends a high sort of a speculative lob inside, and it drops wide. Bad shooting there from Dermot Duggan. And again, Seamus Hurley to take the puck out. Donald Quindell, one of the Corsi mentors, running across the field. Corsi's trained again this year by Kevin Cahilly and Ballon Hassig, trained by Noel Cullinan. Tussle there now with Liam Toomey being hooshed off the ball. Connie Regan trying to give him a help out. Kevin Cullinan has it, blocked down by Jamie Hayes. Cullinan stays on the ground as the ball comes to John Murphy, trying to get inside Declan Healy and passing there to Jamie Hayes. Two defenders around them and a low one from Jamie and a tail in it and wide. Kevin Cullinan still on the ground there as the Ballon Hassig mentors Dennis Ahern, Noel Cullinan and Derry Regan in charge of the side this year. Going across to give some attention to Kevin Cullinan. The Corsi mentors Pete Donovan and John O'Brien. Kevin Cullinan and Dennis Ahern there having a word with Ali Webb, the umpire, Pat O'Neill checking on the situation, and Kevin is on his feet again, I'm sure all as well, goes back to take up his position, and this will be a puck out for Alan Hassig, with about 11 minutes left in this first half. Michal O'Keefe with the puck out, dropping again, the hand goes up, the hand of Lombard beating Brian Downing for once, Racy across with the ball, gets it inside to James Ahern, James Ahern goes to the ground, a judge to have been fouled there, and Pat O'Neill again writing a number, the number of the number nine, Liam Toomey into the lower, and John O'Sullivan waiting for the go ahead, to take the free. Pat just having a word there with the midfielder. And the yellow card has waved the first one of the game. And this one, almost directly in front of the goal, should not present too much difficulty to John O'Sullivan. Standing over it, lifting and striking it. Straight and true and over the bar. 1-5 for Ballon Hassig and 1-5 for the Corsi Rovers. 
Seamus Hawley with the puck out again. Again favouring the far side this time. Johnny Milani seems to have gone across on uh, Dennis Toomey in a switch with Brendan Lumber. But the ball is with the man of the moment, Brian Hayes. He gets it back to Dennis Toomey out near the sideline. Toomey seemed to be tripped there by Johnny Milani. <coughs> and it's a free over on the far side. Pat O'Neill again writing in the book. If Pat continues at the rate he's going, this book is going to be fairly full. And Jamie Hayes goes across to take it. Jamie over near the far side. The linesman, Gerald Harrington, looking on. And Jamie lifting this one and sending it inside and sending it over the bar. The lead again for the men from... Ballina Spittle and Ballina D. Jamie Hayes coming across to resume his position. Being marked at the moment by Brendan Lombard. Brendan not back yet to full fitness after a bout of glandular fever. And Damien McCarthy, the number 13 for Ballina Hassig, not so much in the game as this one. Being chased by David Hayes, gets the ball across and gets it wide on the scoreboard side, the right hand side. Ball waved wide right there by Kevin O'Driscoll from Carrigaline, who was one of the umpires. Seamus Hurley shot the one from Seamus this time. Jamie Hayes doesn't get it. Brendan Lumbert has it. Lumbert's in near high into the air. Out to his brother Donald. Brian Downing one-handed getting the ball away. Over the far side, Dermot Duggan coming out for it in front of Gary Maloney. Duggan tries the hand pass. Blocked down. And the ball with De Liam Toomey, gets it outside to Dennis Toomey and Dennis trying to get it on inside Connie Regan running on as Brian Hayes has it and Brian takes a look and sends it in an economical one from Brian but wide wide on the right hand side and Michal O'Keefe with another puck out for Ballon Hasek Michal O'Keefe sending this one back out the field and a block down there by Liam Toomey. John O'Sullivan racing for this one, racing inside, and Dennis McCarthy doesn't get it. Booted out by Timmy Lorden, being helped there by Gary Maloney. The young Timmy Lorden has acquitted himself well in this game so far, and Brian Downing going across to take this one. Just outside, he's on 45 metre line. Ryan steals a few yards on the far side. And the Brian to lift this one and sends a mighty puck down the field. Dropping inside in the full back line. Con Carlin wearing the number four for Ballinhasic, getting the ball away out this side. James Ahern racing after it. Shawnee McCarthy doesn't get it. Anto Hagerty has it, but the ball got out over the line off the hand of Anto Hagerty and Shawnee McCarthy with the sideline. A low one from Shawnee, very close to the line, un uncharacteristic. Donald Lumber goes across for it, but the flag goes up again and it points in the direction of the Ballinhasse goal and it's going to be another sideline ball for Corsi Rovers over on the far side. Beautiful day here in Ballygarvan. Cloudy, but the sun inclined to break through. And wearing the white helmet, Anto Hagerty to take this one. Anto with the ankle strapped, sends it down very close to the line again. Shawnee McCarthy doesn't get it, it trickles out over the line. <coughs> As the Southeast chairman there looks on, and Ali Webb showing Damien McCarthy where the ball is to be placed. As an aircraft passes overhead, Michael Lumberg giving words of encouragement in the background. Michael, one of the mentors last year. Damien McCarthy gets it inside. Broken away. And Timmy Lord and tussling there with Dennis McCarthy and sending the ball out over the sideline. Again, another line ball for Alan Hasig as the scoreboard there in the background, 1 6 to 1 5 tells the story of the game so far. Damien McCarthy watched by the Ballon Hasek substitutes about to take this one. 
Good one from Damien, dropping all the ways in. A great effort for the score, but tailing off slightly. And another wide ball for Ballon Hassig, who have one goal and five to show for their efforts. To the course, he's one goal and six. John Milani trying to get a stick to it. Dennis Toomey flicking it on inside. Charlie White racing for it. Jamie Hayes has it. Jamie the number 10. Send it in and send it over the bar. Send it over the bar. Corsi Rovers. Seventh point. A goal and seven to a goal and five. A two point lead for Corsi's. Ball back out and play resumes. Donald Lumber not getting the hand to it. Anto Hagerty has it. He beat Johnny Milani. Low along the ground. Stylish horse Milani. Damien McCarthy was pushed off it. And had a few Ryan here. Damien did that challenge. And this is a chance for John O'Sullivan. Just a few minutes now from half time. And Brian Hayes' name. This time I think Brian might be seeing some yellow. Explaining off his actions there to the referee. Yes, it's a yellow card for Brian. And John O'Sullivan. Just outside the 45 metre line over on the far side of the field. Peter Brennan. Former great servant of Ballonhassig looking on there in the background. Now one of the mentors, the treasurer of the club, John O'Sullivan, sends the ball in and sends it over the bar. 1-6 for Ballonhassig and 1-7 for Corsi Rovers. Player resuming there on the far side and David Hayes doesn't get it, Johnny Milani does. Johnny sending the ball up the far side where it comes to that great centre back, Brian Downing. Connie Regan takes a tumble there and Charlie White has it for Corsi's. Charlie a big asset to Corsi's since he came back from his travels. And John Murphy has it and Murphy busting through under pressure from Martin Cusson falls to the ground. And what's going to happen here? Referee Pat O'Neill is running in. He's on Declan of the umpire. A bit of a discussion here now as John Murphy appeared to be brought to the goal. The penalty just coming up to half time. John Murphy, the Corsi's chairman there in the background, as Martin Cusson has his name taken and sees the yellow card. Balhag filling the goal, but referee, I think, signalling that yes, he's up for this one as Brian Hayes, Brian the number 12. Brian Hayes standing over this one. Sorry, Brian, the number 14. Some of these courses numbers are difficult to read. Purchases of courses jerseys, please take note. And Brian Hayes to take this one. Is he going to go for a goal? He sends it in low and hard. And it's a goal for courses Buried in the roof of the net. Almost on the stroke of half time, a killer blow for Ballonhassig, a goal for Corsi Rovers, and it's 2 7 now for Corsi's, a goal and six for Ballonhassig as Pat O'Neill blows the whistle for half time here in Ballygarvan. Plenty for the large crowd to enjoy here in the Isabos Corsi's and the run of play, deserving of their four point lead. 2-7 to 1-6 and we'll be back shortly for the second half. Quite bad now just leaving the scene here in Ballygarvan and very shortly the second half should be underway. The midfield pairing for Corsi, Liam Toomey and David Hayes, and for Val Hattie, James Ahern and Damien McCarthy. Petro just checking his watch, and any second now he should be throwing the ball in for the resumption of this South East final. Making a last check with his linesmen and umpires. They are eagerly awaiting the Resumption and the ball is in, and the game is on in the infamy. Forced to get a stick to it. And sent further up the field to Brian Hayes. Brian, take a look and sending the ball across. And across the face of Mihal of Keith's And wide. 
for the opening attack of the second half by Corsi Rovers. Hello, Keith. Sending the ball down the far side. John Lombard again. Takes away from him. Dan Dini beaten there by John Adamu. Ball very close to the line. Andrew Hagas. Andrew Hagas is still leaving side. And a fast this side. And Dennis Toomey trying to get through. John Milani coming over him as Brian Hayes sends the ball inside. Two Brian's in this team, of course. And John Murphy. A great shot from Murphy. Dangerous moment there for the Belmont defence. A bit of slackness in the pullback line. Come on, Brian! 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 And Dennis sending the ball out into the corner. Again, John Murphy racing for it. With Han Carlin and Murphy getting inside him and busting through. Kevin Kainan comes in and so with John Murphy all over the end line. Kevin is in since there with the referee. It seemed to be a fairly decent shoulder charge. He's going in to check with the umpire inside. It seemed to be a fairly ordinary shoulder charge and John Murphy none the worse for wear but Pat O'Neill coming out and signifying that it's another penalty with three men in the goal I think maybe a rather harsh decision after just two minutes of the second half and perhaps another chance here for Brian Hayes Brian facing this one carefully Coming up to it and sending it over the bar this time. Brian content with his point. We'll remember just before half time where he buried his last penalty in the bar has his neck. Play it to the zone shortly. Come on, John, come on. Pat O'Neill coming across there. Having a word with some of the Balhassid mentors. I think Martin Coleman, the man in question, not too happy with that last decision. And we wait to puff out here. Talking down between Don Lumber and Brian Down, hard pulling between those two and the boys. Half cleared by Anto Hager, and David Hayes doesn't get it. It's eventually cleared out by Ian Coomley. Danny Milani has it. In chase. And Johnny sends the ball inside. Russell inside for it. Both them down. And Tony trying to come out of it. But James Ahelm has it for Bell Hassig. Ahelm trying to get him to swing the stick. The ball is blocked inside. Here out the field by Brian Downing, the centre back. A massive clearance from Downing. But he really doesn't get it. Jamie Hayes trying to get it. John Murphy flicks it inside to him. And Jamie Hayes running into this one. Han Karen coming across the side in this position. Excitement there on the sideline. Han gets it. They play by the corner back. And a good clear and down the field. The hand goes up to it. The hand is doing the dogging. Double pulling there by Diamond. And David Hayes seemed to get the benefit of the end of that stick. And David is on the ground injured at the moment. And Pat O'Neill again coming across. Pat O taking the ball from Dermot Duggan. Not taking any action. David Hayes is still on the ground. And Connie Wigan coming across there. Connie with his toy heavily strapped. Coming across for a stop from the Magic Battle. Bringing David Hayes is totally across to him. And David on his feet again. David also with a heavy toy strapping. And Jamie Hayes running up from there in the foreground as Jamie Hayes stands over this one to take it. Jamie Cindy in Lois. Honey Regan has it. Honey takes a look and sends it across and Honey sends it over the bar. To wait for Corsi Rovers. Just over five minutes gone in the second half. One six for Ballinhash in the blue. Still to score in the second half. Ball dropping down. 
Ryan midfield, Brian Downing is going to get him to stick to it, break it out, Charlie Boyd doesn't add to it, Brian McCaffrey has it, Sean has been Boyd for a while now, gets the ball inside to his nephew, Damien McCaffrey, Damien pushing the ball in front of him, getting away there from Brian Hayes, Brian still staying with him, trying to tap the ball away from him, and the pistol is gone. And Brian saying, I was only trying to tap the ball off the holly, but Mahoney says it's a free in. It's a chance for Alan Hassig and John O'Sullivan, the number 12 and free taker, to reduce the deficit. John here of the post, about 20 metres out. Takes a look. Sends it over the bar. No mistake there from Anna Sullivan. 2 9 for Corsi Rover and a goal in 7 for Ballon Hattie. On, Corsi! James Holly, the quieter of the two goalkeepers. Sending this ball well up the field. A massive puck out from Holly. Kevin Fulman pulling with Connie Reed and Johnny Milano collects it. And Johnny sends it back down the field. Don Lumber trying to pull in it. Picked away by Liam Cooney. Dennis McCarthy in a race for possession there with Tim Lorden. Then he's flicking the ball inside, but the one who collects it is Brian Hayes, and Brian is coming out, and Gamer Duggan half flaps him down, ball very close to the sideline. David Hayes sends the ball further up the field. Breaks away from John Murphy inside, but Murphy comes back to it again. Under pressure there from Brendan Lumber, too much pressure, Pat on the side, and it's another free in for Corsi Rovers and Jamie Hayes as a sub comes on the Balanhassi team. It's Aidan Holland wearing the number 18. We'll follow the play, we'll see who left the field shortly and Pat O'Neill writing the name in his book. Aidan Holland, Aidan, if you remember, played a starring role in Ballon Hassig's Southeast final triumph last year over Corsi. And Jamie Hayes to take this one. Jamie sends it in. And the white flag is raised. And another point for Corsi Rovers. 2-10 for Corsi's and a goal in seven for Alan Hassig. Six points or two goals between the sides. Jamie Govan has this one. Sends it in low. Daniel Sullivan trying to get it inside. Daniel's tackled there by Liam Toomey. And Pat Honey decides that it's a free in. The player for the Alan Hassig team was Jordan Lumber, the centre forward. As John O'Sullivan looks for a place to take this free from about 13 metres out from goal almost directly in front of it he takes a look and he sends it in and taps it over the bar reducing the areas to five times we have eight and a half minutes gone in the second half Dennis McCarthy now seems to have gone into a uh, corner forward position, followed by his marker, who's doing a good job in him, Timothy Lorden, and the ball is cleared out here over the sideline. And Dennis Toomey coming across to take it. Donald Lumberdale, Donald not happy about having been taken off. And one of the Corsi forwards, I think it's. Brian Hayes, their star forward so far. Yes, it's Brian Hayes getting a little attention and a drink from the magic bottle. And Brendan Murphy crossing there as Dennis Toomey prepares to take the sideline ball. It's this time too. Jamie McCaffrey get here for Ballon Hassig and sending his team back into the attack. And the ball comes inside to James Holloway, half blocked down by Darren Deneen. Comes to Jamie Duggan, the number 14. Jamie getting away from Brian Hayes, pulled low by John O'Sullivan. And James Holloway coming away with the ball, being chased by Dennis McCaffrey. And James kicks it, sensibly kicks it out the field, and Dennis Deneen has it. Dennis Boston inside and sending the ball on. Derek's Half collected by Johnny Milani, but John Murphy has it and John on the bus. 
Sends a low ball inside, my waist, puff the and the ball is flipped inside. Oh, an opportunity score there. A disastrous mistake by the Van Hassel defence. The goalkeeper, Michal Ochtit, seems to be leading to the corner back, Nathan Cussing, and Nathan likewise. And Brian Hayes, I think it was Brian Hayes, nipped in between the two, who stacked the ball to the net for another goal for Corsi Roma. Disastrous defending there by Van Hassel, but an opportunity score nonetheless from Brian Hayes, and that's what forwards are there for, as the ball is out over the line on the far side. And Shawnee McCarthy now, a bit of urgency coming into Val Hassig's play. It's 3 10 for Corsi's and a goal in seven for Val Hassig. As Shawnee takes this one, a lowest one inside. Brian Downing coming away with it. Brian Downing, the judge to have been fouled, and Pat O'Neill signifying the free there. Brian Downing will be the taker himself inside his own 45 metre line. A massive pop again from Downing. Hands go up for it. Connie Regan tries to get it. Connie comes and takes a look and sends it in and sends it wide. Horses forwards seem to be winning possession now at will. Must be cause for concern for Ballinhassig after 12 minutes of the second half. And Michal O'Keefe. Walking out again beyond, just beyond the team. Then the Dublin appear to get him nods there. Well, it's from Thomas to feel by the Miss Tony. Connie Regan doesn't get it. Boy Hayes doesn't get it. Comes back out to John Millen. John Millen sending it inside to the inside that he has to draw the line. Then Miss McCaffrey is trying to get it, flipping it. Timmy Logan flipping it in into him like a leaf. And Timmy Logan throwing the ball out to the far side. John Millen doesn't get it. Charlie Hull has it there and Charlie just have been fouled over on the far side. And Pat O'Neill winning it back. The three foul courses on their own 65. And Jamie Hayes stealing a few yards there. Jamie standing over this one. Almost 14 minutes gone in the second half. Jamie sending in a good one. Great delivery there from Jamie. But wide. Great effort from Jamie, but wide on the left hand side. Urgency now in Barry Hassock's play. Ball popped out immediately. James are having trying to get it. Dan O'Sullivan has it. The middle pass to far side it breaks away from Brendan Lumber now operating it full far and he flips it outside. Dennis McCaffrey has it, Dennis takes a look, and Dennis sends it inside, and Dennis sends it over the bar. Van Hassig's third point at the second half. Horses with a goal in three in the second half. 3-10 now for the Horses, and 1-9 for Van Hassig. And Seamus Holly taking his time there, and would you blame him for his team in a good lead? Hocking this one out. Hocking into the half forward line again. Gary Green is beaten by Charlie Hoy. Brian Hayes comes across. Brian collects it. Good block down there over on the far side. And the pressure from Martin Cusson. He's got outside to Charlie Hoy for the judge to attend the ball too long. And Charlie just leaving the ball there for the Val Hassel free. Up in the far corner, Michal O'Keefe, the goalkeeper, to take it. And Pat O'Neill running back there. To have a chat with one of his officials. As we await this free to be taken by Michal O'Keefe. Sun out here now in Ballygarvin, a beautiful evening here. And a breeze that's blowing is favouring the horses players at the moment. Mihalo Keith pucking into the breeze up the far side. Dennis McCaffrey and Timmy Lorden. Timmy Lorden who appears to have the shackles fairly well in Dennis. But this time he's robbed by Shawnee. Shawnee hand pass out to the club member of the McCaffrey. Damien McCaffrey. Lovely side step by Damien. He's being chased there by Jamie Hayes. And Jamie winning possession and winning a free. And it's a free out for. Horses just outside their own 20 metre line. Halfway through the second half, 
and Pat O'Neill writing in the book, writing the name of the Balhassi midfielder, James Ahern, and another flash of yellow there by Pat. Hardly any breeze worth talking about as Brian Downing stands over this one. About 23 metres out from his own goal. And a massive puck from Downing. Dropping, dropping, dropping down into the corner ball position. John Murphy across the feet. It's, it's another goal for Corsi Rover. Collected there by Brian Hayes and across to John Murphy. And John Murphy slots it into the corner. Disaster there for Balhassi. A long puck from Brian Downing. Collected by the other Brian, Brian Hayes. Saw John Murphy free, laid the ball across to him, and Murphy, no problem, slots it into the corner. Nothing the goalkeeper could do about that one. Collected in the middle of the field by James Ahern. Battling against the tide now, gets the ball up into the corner, Brendan Lumber. Under pressure from John Ahern, who Brendan Lumber has it coming across to this. A tackle there by Anto Hagerty. And a bit of a shimmer inside in the corner. So it's pushing and shoving and referee Pat O'Neill going in fairly quickly to soft it out. 16 and a half minutes gone in the second half. And Pat with his book out again over on the far side. 4-10 for Corsi Rovers. A goal and nine. A goal and nine for Alan Hassig. As Pat is taking the name there of the number seven. Corson number seven, Anto Hagerty. Showing the yellow card. <laughs> and coming across also, I thought he was going to speak to John O'Sullivan, but just telling John where to take the free. John over on the right hand side of the 20 meter line, just outside the semi circle. John and McCarthy down the background. Is John. Gets up to this one and sends it in. And sends it over the bar. 110 for Balhassi. And 410 for Corsi Rover. That's a three goal pushing for the men from Balness Bittle. Famous Holly. Pocking this one out. Well up the field, dropping well over the half forward line. Tom Collin racing back to it. Two forwards around him. Gets the ball out of good field from Tom. Danny Sullivan doesn't get it. Charlie Hoyt is the man who has it at the moment. Flipping by a tackle from Ken Jordan. And Charlie sends the ball wide. And another puck out. Quickly taken by Michal O'Keefe. Aiden Hallam doesn't get it, but it's great for Aiden himself from down down. And the ball is cleared out here and it's going over the line. Donald Sullivan racing for it. Doesn't get it. Aiden Tony doesn't get it, but it's a sideline ball for Alan Hasse. And John O'Sullivan seems to have sustained some type of a hand injury. As Johnny Milani was about to take that sideline. Concern there for John O'Sullivan. Some water poured over his hand. Seemed to come in contact with the perimeter fence as he came across for that ball. And Johnny Milani, happening very nicely today. About to take this one. And Johnny looks a very low one. Inside to Jamie Hunt. Jamie Hunt doesn't get his puck in. Charlie White locking it down. It's another sideline ball for Valen Hasse. And again, Johnny Milani to take it. The other one just came into a Helm's hand. And he sees the ball inside into the corner forward position. And the ball is sent in and sent over the bar. Another score for Valen Hasse. 11 for Ballon Hasse and 4 goals and 10 for Corsi Rovers. We have just over 10 minutes left in the second half. Corsi's with a good lead and James Hawley with a strong puck out up into the corner. John Moon doesn't get it. Race for possession. John Murphy has it inside. John has been very involved. 
In all the course moves, gets the ball across the field and sends it wide. But at this stage of the game, I suppose that's as good as a score for Corsi Rovers. Brian Hayes encouraging his teammates on as the ball drops in the middle of the field. Aiden Hallen trying to get a hand for it. Comes inside and Shani McCaffrey has it and Shani getting the better one for Hayes for this time. He needs the ball inside but Seamus Hallen is the last one ever. He's attempted to end flat down there by John O'Sullivan but Seamus still has it. And passes it out to Anto Hagerty, but Seamus is just to have carried the ball too far this time. And it's going to be a free in for Valen Hasse. Damien McCaffrey racing across to retrieve the ball for John O'Sullivan. And it's going to be a free in on the 20 metre line. And John O'Sullivan to be the taker. That only finds out the spot. Just on the 20 metre line. And John O'Sullivan standing over the front. Sends it in, and again sends it over the bar. And that's 1-12 for Valen Hasse. Corsi still with four goals and ten points. And we have just over eight minutes left in this game. Just over eight minutes left in the second half. Not as exciting as the first half. Good pop out again from Sean Stolley, blocked down by Johnny Mullaney. Danny Kumi Ray, Charlie Wilson, the top man tackle there, but there goes on. Jamie Hayes is the star of the helmet, and Dennis Toomey has it. Dennis hand passing it back to Brian Hayes, and Brian sending the ball off into the corner to the other Brian. Breaks away from him. Kevin Kumi throwing the ball, and Brady Holland trying to get it. And he succeeds in knocking it down to Charlie Boy. Charlie breaks away from James Helm, inside again. In Jordan. Kevin Colnan puts up the hand for it and it will toss him down the gun. Kevin clears that hand. Going into the corner. The only button trying to get it. Donald Dunn who knocked him closely and Brian Hayes has it. The Brian has it in the round and the Brian takes it back in style along the sideline. Seems to be knocked out over the line and it's a free for Corsi Rovers. And certainly they're now in the faces of the Alan Hassig mentors and there's another sub in for Alan Hassig I think it's the number 19 Michael Cohan he'll follow the player I'm not sure who's going off as Jamie Hayes minus his white helmet standing over this one take a look sends it in a good delivery from Jamie Locking inside and the stick of John Murphy gets to it but Michal keeps locked at this time and sends it out very close to the line where David Hayes goes across to take the sideline ball. Just over six minutes left in the game. Holly Webb, the umpire on the far side, waves his flag and David Hayes about to take this one, taking his time for it, David, and a great cut from David dropping inside in the goal mouth and it's collected there and kicked to the net. Kick to the net there by Brian Hayes for Corsi Rovers. A great goal. But I think Brian was the try that time. I think that goal was disallowed. The judge that had been standing in the square. So the Corsi score remains at four goals and ten points. And Ben has to go back into the attack. And the ball is not so far as 65. Umpires there, Declan and Jim O'Neill, brothers are Wesley Pat O'Neill. And we await this 65. Ball went left there by Brian Hayes under pressure from Tim Job and kicked to the net with Brian Judge to have him inside the square. And this one is dropped in Brian down and breaks it down. And it's collected there by Seamus Hayes. And as a substitute and Seamus sends the ball up the field but is collected by Johnny Milani wearing the number by Kevin Kalan wearing the number six. Back to the course is number six Brian Downing. Charlie White puts up the hand for it. Declan Healy playing for the road he gets it in. Dropping inside to the goal to the bring a bit of jogging with it. And it's knocked out eventually for a wide ball. Just five minutes left in this game. Corsi Rovers. Four goals and ten points. Ballon Hasse, one goal and twelve. Surely no. The way things are going at the moment. 
too much of an ear for Ballon has to try and retrieve. And Colin doesn't get the same break inside and Johnny Milani is going back to the under pressure from David Hayes, collected there by Tim Jordan, Tim Jordan coming over the ball, flicks it outside, Aiden Holland doesn't get it, it's added to down the field. And Timmy Lorden has it for forces. Timmy takes a tumble there. Ryan Hayes flicking the ball inside. And Dennis Tony sacks down on the ankles. Dennis sends the ball inside to Connie Regan. Connie letting the ball slip in his grasp to Johnny Milani. And Johnny Milani sending the ball down the field. The hands go up for it. The hand that goes up is James Ahern. And gets the ball on despite the attention of three fours of defenders. Breaks inside and Michael Cohan crossing for possession. John O'Sullivan has it. John the free taker very close to the line. Brian Hayes has it and Brian Buxton away with the ball. The strong corner back gets it up the field. Collected by Johnny Milani and Johnny Milani sending it back down into his half forward line. Brendan Lumber doesn't get it. Michael Cohan takes the look and sends it inside. Gets in the hips to the left and wide. And there's just over three minutes left in this game. Surely no. The Corsi's team here are home and dry as another sub comes in for Corsi Rovers. And we await the puck out. Honey Regan. Honey leaving the action. And Honey signals. And the ball is dropped down. Into the and the ball is dropping in the in the of the run. Regan. In a hurry now to get the ball back out to field and send it out there on the halfway line and going down and flex it under pressure from Brendan Lumber. And the ball outside and Seamus Hayes send it up into the corner. Dan Murphy race it fast. Dan Benin just possessed there by David Hayes and David Hayes bust into an grave one. Picks the ball outside but Tim Jordan coming away with a foul, Ballon Hassig. John O'Sullivan trying to help out. And James Hurden has it. James, the Ballon Hassig number eight, coming more into the game. Leaving it there for John O'Sullivan to take the free. Just on the 65 metre line. And Tanshin's at low to James Hurden, who takes a big pull, doesn't get the ball. Charlie White get away from him, gets it the second time and seems to take him off there and James lies in the ground as Pat O'Neill, the referee, comes across. We have just two minutes left in the game. An injury here to the Balhasig midfielder, James Ahern. Two minutes left in the game with Corsi's with the four goals and ten points to a goal and twelve for Balhasig. A comprehensive lead here for Corsi Rovers. Deserving of that lead from the way they played. Noel Conan there, who was coaching the Valhassic team this year. Noel, a former Valhassic star himself, shouting words of encouragement, but I think it's probably too late. Of course, he's back in the attack again. Tim Jordan has it just possessed there by Brian Hayes. Unfairly so, the referee says, and it's a free for Valhassic. And Tim Jordan to take it himself. Sends it on down the field. Dropping inside. Mikey Cohan trying to get it. Ball cleared out again by who else but going down. Out the far side and the hand that goes up is John Murphy. Trying to get away from Con Carlin. John sends it across the middle. And pass back to John again. But Con Carlin knocking the ball away from him. And Con the judge to have been fouled. And it's a free out for Ballon Hassey. And this free now will be taken here by Shani McCaffrey over on the far side. Just half a minute left in this game. Shani standing over it. Seems to take his eye off it and drop it inside. Broken out by Timmy Lorden, who's had a very solid game for forces. Shani McCaffrey coming back. But it's Santo Hazel to the other wing back and Aiden Holland has it now. He sends it across. The hand that goes up is Johnny Milani trying to force it into the net. A great hustle inside of the goal now. Brendan Lombard pulls in it. But I think it's, yes, I think it's uh, Pat O'Neill looking at the watch. 
and say it's a penalty for Ballon Hasse and Damien McCarthy wearing the number 13 playing at midfield Damien will take this one I'm up here in Ballygarvan we're actually 25 seconds into injury time as Damien stands over this one referee motion Seamus Hawley away and Damien waiting now for the go ahead from the referee lifting and striking it low and hard and it's, it's a goal for Ballon Hassig a goal for Ballon Hassig in the dying moments of the game open for Corsi Rovers and two goals and 12 for Ballon Hassig and a small bit of RG Bardi in disagreement going on inside and the referee consulting there with his umpires as we are a minute and a half into injury time at this stage and he goes across to the other side to speak to Oliver Webb checking everything out and taking out his book and speaking to the Balhassan number seven that's Brendan Lumber writing Brendan's number in the book Johnny going across, Johnny McCaffrey and having a word with the referee and he waves the yellow card to Brendan Lumberg and we'll resume with a pop out here by Seamus Hawley showing the ball to the referee the lead out the team and it's all over Coffee Rovers regained the title they lost last year 4-10 for Corsi Rovers, 2 goals and 12 for Balhash, it's a deserved win for Corsi here in Ballygarvan. And I'm sure everyone here in the Saudi will be wishing them the best of luck in their endeavours to win the County Junior Hauling Championship. And with that spirit and that attitude and approach, Harling and Saudi's Cork 
will always be strong and we can look forward to the future. May I take this opportunity on behalf of everybody as well to thank the Bally Garden Club, Miles Barry and his team of people who have their venue in excellent condition. It was a pleasure to be here today in one of the oldest centres in Saudi East And as we mentioned already, it's been a great weekend for the Valley Garden Club because last night in Riverstick they made their own bit of history by winning their first minor A football championship in their history. So a great weekend for the games of Valley Garden. <laughs> I would also like to thank the referee, Mr. Pat O'Neill, who is refereeing. This is his 32nd year refereeing in Saudi East Cork for his excellent handling of the game and for all his officials. But I have to say, in fairness to the players from Ballantastic and Courses, they didn't make life too difficult for them. Thanks, Pat, and to your officials for playing a very important role this afternoon. I'm very pleased to introduce to you a man alongside me here, a great friend of the GN Saudis Cork and the Saudis Board, Mr. Barry Collins of Super Value Carrigaline, who has a long association of goodwill and sponsorship for our Junior A Hurling Championship. It's great to have one of our own. It's great to have a man from South East Cork, a man who has been very successful in his business and a man who has provided many hundreds of jobs for people in the locality and in the division. Mr. Barry Collins, we salute you for your achievements. We thank you for your goodwill to the South East Board and continue sponsorship. Mr. Barry Collins, please let me We now come, I think, to the moment that every captain is waiting for, uh, particularly in South East Cork, and that's the acceptance of the trophy which denotes supremacy in junior rear hurling. You give me great pleasure. <laughs> yes, I'm presenting it to a name take on my own, no relation. Uh, but uh, a man who had an outstanding game and a family who made a great contribution to the course of this club, Seamus Toomey. And for 10 minutes, due to the fact that the competition around courses is so great, faces. But right, Jamie Hayes, vice captain, should be receiving this, but they shoved me into the last minute. Hello, Jamie. I'd like to thank uh, or congratulate all the team and all the members of the panel who are training on the show to you who've been such a great effort to get us here today. And uh, also, all the selectors, Kevin Hannon, Pete Donovan, and Don Quinn, who've, who've been great work. I'll show to you trying to get us to this day. Mm -hmm. And also to our coach Kevin, Kevin Kiley, who uh, put us through a, a lot of work this year. <laughs> for me, a lot of professionals to do the extra bit of training and all the rest of it, and for we for reaping rewards today. Hard luck Van Hattig, they played well today as they do every day throughout. And uh, I can say hard luck to Three showers Van Hattig. Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, before we complete the ceremony, we come to the Man of the Match Award. And um, again, I'm delighted to have here with me Dorn Coleman of Ballonhasic, uh, who has been this award uh, since it is sponsoring a Man of the Match award in Hurling. Because when we'll ever talk about hurling and excellence in hurling in Saudi East Cork, the name Coleman would inevitably come up. Uh, I will now hand you over to Donald. Donald will formally announce the winner, 
and the uh, winning the winner of the uh, trophy will uh, receive that trophy tomorrow at a luncheon for the winning team at the Roberts Cove Inn, very, very kindly and generously sponsored by Dennis Quinn. I would ask you to show your appreciation to Dennis Quinn and the Roberts Cove Inn. <laughs> Mr. Donald Coleman. Mr. Chairman, fellow Gales, it's indeed a great honour for me to be associated with this man in the match, I think since 1976 or that when I look at it in the program, I feel I must be getting old. But ha having said that, um, I want to first of all congratulate Corsi Rovers on the wonderful victory. I don't think the four points does justice to their supremacy. It was by far the better team, particularly in the second. We all have to wear our hat at times, and I'm wearing the Balanhasic hat. John referred kindly there to the Coleman's, but I think it's the first time ever in the Southeast final. There were four Coleman's and the subs, and no one playing. So maybe that's Balanhasic last, I don't know. <laughs> But that's not taking from courses. You had a great win today. You have a fine team. Kevin Keeley's training towards, I could see that today, the experience and the physical fitness of the team. I feel myself, and I know I'm speaking for all of Balanhasic, and I would say all of the Southeast, I think this courses team is good enough to go ahead and win the county. Yeah. And I would say yeah. and the, match, the judges today were Neil O'Mahony, Sean Collins, men selected by the chairman, he said there were three very experienced men, know what is all, great players themselves. So I asked the young lad here actually, just before I came on air, who got man in the match and he told me. So I think I would like to think that it will be a popular choice. His contribution today was enormous. I'm not going to give the exact score that he scored, but it was substantial. I'm referring to none other than Brian Hayes. Yes, Brian is handing because he'll have an opportunity tomorrow in Robert's Cove in. I haven't brought the trophy, even not, I think it's the finest trophy that presented for the man in the match since started in 1976. And I think you would all agree that Brian Hayes is a worthy recipient of that trophy. So again, <laughs> I'll hand you back to the chairman now. Thank you, Donald, and again we appreciate your very generous remarks and compliments Ridley as a Balanhasic man towards uh, the victors here today, Corsi Rovers. Uh, in contrast, I'm sure you will all join with me here, all followers of hurling, all sports wishing in their quest for county honours. Just a, two short years ago, the freshness and spirit that they've shown today, I think that will and desire is back, and they'll go one step better this year and bring that title to Saudi East Cork. So our goodwill and our wishes Go to the lads from Ballinadee and Ballinaspital in their quest for county honours for me, Margaret Belair. Is that flashing, is it? No. No. Okay, let's try it again. Uh, we want to, I suppose, go into the final stage of the South East Junior Hurling Championship programme and um, at the very outset, uh, again, in my capacity as chairman of the board, I want to welcome you to this special pleasant function here at the Robert at, and as was with Frank Christian Hassig, but knowing Baron Hassig, Baron Hassig will never be known for long. So we are there from and from Hassig. At the very outset, I'm sure all joy with me in expressing our sincere thanks and deep appreciation to Dennis Quinn for this innocent gesture. So I It's a wonderful here, nice and peaceful here in a lovely, lovely setting. And again, we very much appreciate the excellent cuisine and the, we send our sincere thanks and appreciation to the chef and the kitchen staff for a wonderful meal and wonderful service. Yeah, yeah. Sincere thanks to them all. Yeah, yeah. After the presentation of the Perpetual Trophy yesterday afternoon in Lee McCarthy Park in Ballygarvan. Uh, Mr. Donald Coleman, the sponsor of the Man of the Match Award, 
I think, made a very, very popular announcement uh, when he told us that Jamie Hayes was the man of the match for our 1999 final. I won too many. I won too many. I won too many. But uh, on a serious note, uh, we had some outstanding displays yesterday from the courses players and uh, I think um, any player who can put the ball in the net on three occasions in the Saudi's final, make another one and have one disallowed, disallowed for uh, good measure, I think that's a unique feat and something that you will always remember. Um, again, I want to express our sincere appreciation to Doran Coleman and the Coleman family of Ballinhasic uh, for their sponsorship. It gives the uh, final. I thank the judges who were down in Lee McCann Park. We had Frank Crowan from Benny Martel, who was here and just left us. Um, a, a man who played hurling with Benny Martel for many years and won Saudi's medals and lost in Saudi's finals. And he knew exactly what he was like out there. He was John, John Collins of Carrigaline who captained Cork in All-Ireland minor hurling title and who won Southeastern and um, indeed <coughs> played in losing finals also. And thirdly we had Neil O'Man from Club Shamrocks who played in the latter Southeast finals. He played in three Southeast finals in 56, 57 and 58 and last and won his first medal in 59 and again. But they all knew what it was like to play in the Southeast final. And again we say sincere thanks to Father Cooperate and I think coming up with the obvious choice. Uh, it now brings me to this very special part of this and we invite our man of the match to come forward and representing the Coleman family, we have dear Coleman, uh, who we were delighted to see him. He, he worked hard and he was there talked out to the indigenous Coleman spirit and passion and a great fantastic spirit ready to be in action. And uh, I, dear man, I would like you to try and go ahead with the presentation. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, being a straight now, it's not easy being down here this evening. <laughs> That's being a straight now, straight from the shoulder. <laughs> but on the day, Cork was out hurling, we have no. And the man that got in the match, he took his chances when he got them, and that's what the game is all about. Any man that scores 3 2, what can you say? So I would like to wish Corsi Rovers the very best luck in the county ahead. You two steps to go, boys. His near boots and the very best look to you. So I would like to present this man the match award to Brian Hayes. Brian Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> the Coleman family for sponsors and I think it was a great team effort yesterday and I think any other one of the players would have been ready to get the, the award as well so that's all I have to say. I think he's much better at getting goals than giving speeches. I know. I guess you would the speeches. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, I would now like to invite the chairman of the Courses Club, no other than Sean Murphy, the president of two words. Sean Murphy, chairman of Courses. <coughs> so I'll give you the five seconds notice, Sean. <laughs> uh, chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to, on behalf of Courses, uh, to um, agree with you that this is a good job this meal and I would you know, like to thank uh, Dennis and all the staff for the beautiful meal. Um, the Emmett said it wasn't easy for them to stand up here. So I don't feel very comfortable here. The Emmett, um, it's my fifth year coming down here. It's my first time coming down here 
has windows over Ben Hessig, so that gives you an idea of the, the way the, the thing is balanced. Um, we might have, we had the upper hand of you yesterday, as you said, but I bet you if we met again next Sunday, it would be a 50-50 game. Going back to our own team, and in particular to Brian Hayes, I would like to congratulate him. Um, get three goals in, in, in any game is good, but in, in, in his uh, service final is, is excellent. But of course, we all know in course of the years that, that Brian is the most talented player. Doesn't all be short. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yesterday, oh, yeah. yesterday he came good. And I know that, uh, as I said to him last night, the trouble about getting three goals in a match is that we'll be expecting at least three more every other match. Uh, as regards from here out, um, our first round in the county, I don't know when it's going to be, it's to be five, five or six weeks. Um, we hope we'll be able to you know, do, keep up the, the tradition of the, of the division and try to, you know, hopefully bring the, bring the trophy back to the South East. Um, I don't think there's any more that I'm going to say, Chairman. Again, thank you and uh, to our officers for inviting us. And uh, I'm not out of ten, as he will be up here again next year, don't worry. Okay. So, thank you. Come on, guys. I think we'll take note of Sean's final remarks when he said, I hope Ben has to be here next year. I think if we read between the lines, maybe of course he's going to be playing intermediate. So, uh, <laughs> Sean, uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, we had a great final yesterday between our two top hurling teams in the division. Two teams who have contributed enormously uh, uh, to hurling throughout South East Cork and further afield uh, over many, many years. And uh, I have to say about Ballon Hastig is that when they win, and, and Sean's born out here, Sean has been over here, uh, maybe sitting at this table on a number of occasions uh, after losing to Ballon Hastig in finals, but they've always been very, very gracious and dignified when they win. I must say that. Yeah. And uh, again, after the game yesterday, I know they were bitterly disappointed, and they wouldn't be much good if they weren't disappointed. But again, they were very graceful and generous in defeat. And this is indicative of the great sportsmanship that's always been associated with Ballon Hasek. And I know Ballon Hasek as long as, as, many, as much as anybody else here, but I played with him way, way back, and looking at one man there, Noel Conan, one of the most outstanding centre backs I played against him, and way, way back. But again, a great hurling team, but win or lose, they were always very, very gracious. I know they'll be hurt and they'll be disappointed this week, but they have a lot of young players. They won the minor hurling title last year. They won it again this year. I think there's a bright future there, and they will get over that, and they will be back as a great force because uh, it's, all, it's essential for Saudi's Cork that, that Bell and Hastig be a strong hurling force. They contribute so much to our division. So thanks, lads, for contributing so much and for making it such a meaningful and exciting final yesterday. I would now like to invite their chairman, Mr. Pat Desmond, uh, who led uh, the Balanhastic delegation here today, and they've come in strength here today. This is indicative again of what they think of this event, and again, that they're uh, willing to face the music, whether it's um, good or bad. And Pat, I'd like to invite you here to ask them to say a few words for the occasion. Okay. <coughs> Officers of the Soviet Court, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as all the previous speakers said, it's not easy to come down to a function after the Soviet final has, um, has been runners up. Um, it, yesterday was um, a day that we thought we might have dates in courses, you know. Um, we spoke about during the week, you know. Courses are a very good young team, like him, to win the county, I'm sure, two years ago, you know. That time is bound to come, you know. But, but um, um, just great credit due to people who look after the teams in, in the courses club and our own club in Hessek, you know. Therefore, that goes into training teams for Saudi's finals, you know. Gone are the days when you might train for five or six weeks before a Saudi's final and have a championship match. It starts now in January, as you all know. And um, it's more disappointed in like when you get beaten after putting maybe nine months' work, you know, at Saudi's final. But um, 
hopefully Valencia will be back again. You know, we have a lot of good young players coming up, and um, we 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 keep going anyway. Um, I think we'll take a leap out of Horsey's books. Um, John said they're going to go there. Um, for Sean said they're going to go there. He was in the runners up table for five times before he got to the winners table. You know, so um, we we'll keep going, and um, hopefully we'll be back. And um, I just like to wish Horsey's the best luck in the county. They are uh, into the semi final of the county now, and they've. Two games to become county champions, you know. Um, I think they'll have to be pleased with that because they, if they did become county champions, they'd be out of our way for next year. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just like to congratulate the man of the match as well. Um, he had an exceptional day, scoring three goals and two points in the Southeast final. It's um, a great achievement um, because scores are hard to come by in finals, especially, and to score three is um, an exceptional thing. So I just finished by congratulating Corsi's and wishing all this. Thanks, Just before we close, uh, I think there, were, there was one man who was very anxious to be here today. Uh, I think a very popular man out in Corsi's country. He's your sponsor, Mr. Flower Griffin. And uh, Noreen Quinn, I think, has a small um, few words to say on his behalf. Thank you very much. <coughs> Noreen needs no introduction. Um, right. Mr. Chairman, uh, officers of the South East Board, um, members of Bellahassic and Owner Club. Um, Flor rang this morning and he just said he'd like to pass on his congratulations. First of all, he thanked um, Dennis and the Board for your kind of invitation to the function, sends his apologies. And he's been a great sponsor to our club down through the years and he usually stays in the background and today now he's staying in the background again but he said he, he was at the match yesterday and he really enjoyed the match and to please pass on his congratulations to all the lads that's all i have to say in conclusion um uh, li li ladies and gentlemen um again i would like to express our sincere thanks to the Ballygarvan Club for the excellence of their pitch and their facilities out there yesterday. It was yeah. really a great occasion. Yeah, yeah. 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 We you know, we were blessed with fine weather and, um, you know, one of the great occasions in our division, and I say this with due respect to the footballers, is our hurling final day, and it had everything yesterday. There was marvellous crowd there, a lot of people, uh, meeting people who they hadn't met for years and so on and so forth and uh, as I say it had all the great values that we expect in our association in our division and uh, again we're very indebted to Ali Garvin uh, for the excellence of their um, of, of their facilities yeah, yeah. Uh, I would also like to pay a special word of thanks to the my own colleague officers of the Saudis board for the work that they have done um, uh, right throughout the year and in organising yesterday's game and in particular I would like to say a special word of thanks to the man that has boundless energies and uh, the man who's absolutely supercharged that's Mr Jim Ford because he put an amount of work in a lot of work that we don't even know went on but it had to be done and lots of things that we expect to see there and they are there and we rarely ask the question who did it or how was it done but we say a sincere thanks to Jim because you know he is a very very busy man. He's PRO of the Clark County Board and Clark happened to be in two All Irelands and uh, I mean he went about 48 hours in the day. But uh, I would like to uh, give him special mention here because yeah, his yeah. input is tremendous. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get those bus tickets. Um, we're also very grateful to the media who, who give our games such wonderful coverage. And um, again, this is great, I think, for the clubs and for the communities and for the players for all concerned. So the public at large are fully informed with what is going on. And uh, here today we're joined by a great friend of ours, a great media man, and that's John Newman of the Southern Star. John covers all our games, and you can read all about it in the Southern Star next week. There'll be a detailed account on it. And I want to say thanks to John and all the other media people uh, for their coverage and for their goodwill here to our games and to our division. Uh, in conclusion, I join with Pat Desmond, the chairman of Bellin 
in extending our best wishes to the hurlers of courses when they go into the country now. You'll probably have to wait maybe four or five weeks, but uh, be ready. You're in the county semi-final. You're two games away from a county title. You missed out by a point the last time, and I've no doubt you'll go all the way at this time. To make it a great year, a great way to finish the millennium and the century by being county champions. And let that be your target. But be rest assured, I say to the young players and the, the great hurlers, of course, is that all hurlers and people who love hurling and admire hurling in Saudi's Cork will be fully behind you. And the first of doors will be people here alongside me, Ballon Hassig, for me and my And I'm just going to ask him a few words and his thoughts on the match yesterday. Um, things went well for us. Um, John, it was tough, it was hard, it was very hot there at that time. And just things seemed to run well for us and the result came away and that's what we're out for. And did you think at the start of the match that, um, that, that course has had the beatings of Ben Hassick? Uh, ben Hassick started well, alright, like they got a couple of early points. I think we came back at him and we kept ahead and we kept at him and things seemed to go right for us when they got the goal. We seemed to get the goal straight after us, we knocked them, knocked them back again. So good over. And in your own performance, Brian, um, you scored three two, which was an exceptional um, scoring. I think there was only one other person done that in the southeast. Um, uh, memory fails. To, I think it's Pat Dunham actually who scored three two. Um, did you think yourself that you were up for the game yesterday and could you have scored three two go out? Uh, I was just hoping to do my bit, like you know, keep help do my bit as I was trying to do, like you know. But as it happened, I just happened to be in the right place at the right time, and I think things went well for me. And you know, that's the way it goes, like some days are run right, right for you. And your thoughts now on the rest of the, the county in the campaign? Um, courses have two games to play you now for the for for to get into. Well, obviously, first game will probably be the tough one. But the second game, hopefully, will be into the county um, final. Do you think that we can still get out there and win a county final this year? Um, if we keep at it, yeah, definitely. We have the have the players now. I think for a very well balanced team, and if we stay at it, we can go a long way in here. But it'll take just one, one match at a time in here. So, main thing next, next winners of Immaculate and Avondale, and be a couple of weeks yet, like, but we'll. Take one match at time. I think we, we, we can do it. I think we, we had the potential, right? So. Thanks very much. That's Brian Hayes with me here on Roberts Cove on the Monday after the South East final. With me here now again um, this evening and Monday evening, Roberts Cove in is um, the chairman, of course, you're always, Mr. Sean Murphy. And I'm um, just going to ask him a few words on his thoughts in the match yesterday. My thoughts in the match yesterday, I suppose it has a marvelous feeling to be having won the Saudi Championship. I was fairly confident all the time Even before the game. I thought that we were, we were up for it, like we were, they were anxious for, they were anxious for hurling. They were, they, they, that little bit of bite was, which was lacking last year, I felt uh, that was back in and, you know, I was never worried about their ability because they, they have plenty of hurling, every one of them, and it proved, you know. And in saying that, um, what do you think it has done for the club and itself now, for the coming into the 1999, the last, the last year of, of this century? Has it proved the fact that maybe courses are a team to be reckoned with the 90s? Well, you, you, there is an awful difference nearly between, as you know, between winning and losing. You saw that last night and you saw it 12 months ago. Um, I think that all our players, both young and not so young, let's say. Like from junior down, down to the under 12, they all have, a, have a, the basics very right. Thanks to Sean Reardon, I would, I would say. Um, and once you have the basics right, it's, it's a matter of applying yourself to the task after that. And um, I have no doubt that uh, hopefully we will do well in the, in the county series. And 
No, I, I think we are there or thereabouts anyway. No? Well, that's my next question, actually, the county mm-hmm. series, actually. Um, we are two matches away from the, from, the, from the county. Is it possible that courses can actually do um, uh, a, um, a castle lines in it, maybe for 1999? Well, hopefully, that's what we'd be hoping. As you know, the two years ago, we, we, we were just pipped by a pint. Um, I believe we are as good as what is there in the county at the moment. Even though I look around us now, I know the, the other division play their finals yet. There's some very good teams out there. Um, we happen to be have the half side of the draw, as far as I can see. And um, but I, I think we have nothing to fear at the same time. I think if we we'll hit it on the day, we'll, we're good enough for any team that's there at the moment. And as chairman of um, Corsi Rovers, what would you say to the players and uh, supporters for this year? It's a hard question, though, but I mean, I'll, I'll let you get your thoughts together on that one. But what would you say to the players now? now? Obviously, the players will be the top one, and our supporters after that. What I would say to the, to the players and supporters, um, what I would say to the players that uh, their future is and their future is in their own hands. Number one, um, it's up to themselves. They, they have the ability. In my opinion, they have the ability, and it's just a matter of, you know, getting things right on the day. Uh, as far as supporters are concerned, I think we have the best supporters in, in, in the so- definitely in the South East, if not the county. Um, I would ask for, for that further support in all, in all our matches. And um, I suppose really to support us in our, in our building program as well, which we must look after at home. Um, and, um, you know, to help us always forthcoming in, in Ben Hospital and Ben Lady, and I've no doubt that that's the way it will continue. Well, with those words, um, we'll wind off after a ni- very successful 1999 South East campaign. I'll wind down with this last few words, courses for the county.